And Justin here today we are checking out the incredible Master Blaster by Stevie Wonder. This is a really great fun song for guitar, got lots of cool little things to learn about octave playing with the mute, some really nice little chips going on on the rhythm guitar and then we've got that great kind of unison lead guitar part which sounds really cool and is great fun to play along with the record. So let's get to a close up and check out how to do it. <laughs> Okay, so that's the intro and it's using octaves. So we're starting off with the first finger in the eighth fret of the thicker string. And then the other note that we're playing is also a note C. Now I'm playing it here with the little finger, but you could use your third finger as well if you like. And it's the 10th fret of the fourth string. So they're actually the same note. Okay, and we're just gonna be playing this note twice on the thicker string and then twice on the fourth string. One and two and three, four. One and two and three. Four. Noting that I've got a bit of palm mute, but we'll look at the other hand again in a second. So uh, the notes that we're playing, we're going to be playing the C first, twice in fact, then down a tone to the B flat, then down another tone to A flat, which we're going to play twice, down one fret to the note G, then down a tone to F. I'll play that one three times, then back to C. But look, I've done C a different place here, okay? So it's the same notes. Okay, but just because we've gone from here to jump all the way up here accurately and fast and get right on the note on the groove, it's kind of tricky. Whereas if you move to here, you've got the slight disadvantage of that note being uh, slightly more brittle than this one. Slightly different sound. But uh, I think it's worth it because it means that you can kind of lock into the groove. And, and to my ear, that's what's going on with the, the guitar part on the actual recording. Um, so I tend to go for the, the C here, the third fret of the fifth string and fifth fret of the third string. And then it goes to B flat, which is the same as the second chord that we had, which was the six, first finger in the sixth fret of the uh, thicker string. So if I take you through that whole sequence now, and I'm going to count the rhythm along as well. So we'd have this three four one and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three four one and two and three four and again and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three four one two and three and four one and two and three 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 four okay let's have a quick look at the picking hand <laughs> So we're doing down, up, and then down, up on the thicker string, and then on the fourth string. 
but you can hear there that I'm using muting as well. So I've actually got the palm of my hand resting right on the strings, but just near the bridge, okay? One of the things that you wanna do is figure out how much mute you need, like where to put the hand. If you put it too far up, you don't get any note. If you put it too far off, you get the whole kind of pure note. You don't get any of that mute. So you just wanna slide it forward so it's just touching and then experiment a little bit yourself to get just the right amount of palm mute. Let's start by looking at the most basic version of these chords that we might want to use, which is full bar chords. So uh, the chords that we need are a C minor bar chord, this is up at the 8th fret. Then we need a B flat chord, which is at the 6th fret. An A flat chord, which is at the 4th fret down one for a G chord, and down another two frets to an F chord. And then we want a different version of C minor. I'll explain why in a second. This is the one at the third fret, okay? So nothing on the thicker string. Three, five, five, four, three. And then it goes back to B flat. Okay, so we got this basically. C minor. B flat. To A flat. It's the 4th of July. To G, to F. And then we're C minor and back to B flat. One more time. Notice again this uh, C minor that we're playing in two different places. After the F, going straight back to the C minor up there is a really, really big jump. And you can quite clearly hear on the record going from the F there to this C minor to that B flat. You can hear the top note going from the F, C minor, B flat. Okay? So I'd start off by learning that chord sequence, but know that now we're going to play it a little bit more funky. This is the way that it's actually played on the record. Um, and what we're doing is basically doing a small version of those bar chords. So uh, let's start actually with the major one, it's a little easier. We look at the B flat chord, the big bar chord. If we just drop the first finger down so it's just playing the thinnest two strings, and then move our third finger to where little finger was, little finger's going to come off. Okay, so this is a B flat chord. That would be the root note, but we're not going to be playing that there on the, the thicker string. We're still first fingers in the sixth fret. We're not playing the thickest two strings, and then we've got eighth fret, seventh fret, sixth fret, sixth fret. And the really big deal with this chord shape is that the third finger is kind of pressing up just a little bit to mute the fifth string. Right? You really don't want that string ringing out open, it's going to sound really bad. And if you can, definitely for some of the chords anyway, you want thumb coming over just to touch the thicker string. But you want to be careful with your strumming as well not to play the thicker two strings, but uh, it's generally a good idea to cover them just in case you do. So that's the B flat chord. To get to the C minor chord, which is the first chord we need, we just move that shape up two frets. Okay, so first finger's now in the eighth fret, the same fret as it was when we were doing the big bar chord. This time the bar's gonna be covering the thinnest three strings. Okay? Now, let's just talk about the rhythm as well, because the rhythm's a pretty big deal here. Now, what we're going for is this. Okay, so I'm going one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... It's the rhythm. It's coming on two and and four and. So we got one, two, and three, four and. Let's just start off with that. Slightly different later on, but. Now hopefully some of you will see there that I'm pumping with my hand. So what's actually happening is, as I'm doing the down strum, my fingers press down and then they relax. So I'm not doing any muting with the other hand at all. Okay, I'm just relaxing the grip of the chord. And the notes stop, okay? And then for the upstroke, again, I'm pressing the chord down and then relaxing the hand. So really slowly, down, lift up the fingers, up, lift up the fingers. Okay, this is, kind of feels a little bit weird if you do it this slowly. 
Okay? Down strum, relax, up strum, relax. Okay? Sometimes it's worth practicing it that really slowly just to make sure you're getting the right bounce there with the hand. But as you get a little faster, okay, you'll definitely feel it feels a lot more natural, a little, just a little bit faster. So that's really what you want, those nice, really tight notes. If you, if you don't do anything like that, you would just end up with... Which obviously just doesn't sound right. The whole style is really this... Okay, that's really, you want to be working on that. And again, it's just pumping the chord. Now, if you're pumping correctly and you relax your hand, if you accidentally strum, you're going to get these little kind of clicky things, which are actually kind of, you know, part of the style again, having... You don't always want them, you know, it's a choice as to whether you're going to get that little clicky stuff going in or not. Two and three, four and one, two and three, four and one, two. Okay, notice here with the C minor, okay, we've still used that same fifth string root shape of the C minor, but again, first finger's just gone down to the thinner string. Nothing on the thickest two strings, then fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret, third fret. Same thing there with the pressing and releasing of the chord. Back to B flat. So it's C minor. Really good fun one to play this along with the original recording and really kind of lock into the groove. A really good thing that you might want to practice just while I'm on it is doing a continuous mute and really working on the groove. Because if you, if you start playing the chords, your ears will pick up on the chords more than it will on the rhythm. So a good exercise is just to cover all of it. So it's nice muted and then just practice. Two and three, four and one, two and three. Just playing that along with the record, so you really kind of pick up on the groove on the record, because the groove on the record is fantastic and definitely worth copying. So that's the part for the verses. So the chorus is starting on the C minor chord again, same one that we used for the verse. But the next chord that we've got is a G7. Okay, it's a kind of a, what we call a D shape. Uh, we're starting with the first finger in the fifth fret of the fourth string, third finger, seventh fret, third string, second finger, sixth fret, second string, and little finger in the seventh fret of the thinner string. This is a G7 chord. Okay, there's the root note. Making sure again the tip of the finger is uh, muting the fifth string. You just want to really make sure you're not uh, playing that thicker string because getting the thumb over for that chord is a little bit awkward. Okay, and then we move that down two frets and we get the F7. And then we've got a little riff. You can either just stay on the F7 or you can join for the little riff. So let's look at the chords first. So we've got this. Or you can add in this little riff after the F7 here. Okay, we're just playing the first fret on the, this is the fourth string, first fret, third fret, fifth, twice, third, first, and then finishing on that root note, the C, which is the third fret of the fifth string. Okay. I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. Okay, you could. If you want as well. 
you move the, B, the uh, E flat note there to the sixth fret of the fifth string. Little bit easier, but because of the rhythm of it, I prefer getting to it with a little stretch like that. But uh, doesn't really matter which one of those you want. Um, the trick with that one, the rhythm can be a little bit. Uh, awkward and the best thing to do again you know you can try counting it but definitely listening to it's going to be a lot easier just one and two and three and four and so you've just got this little pickup 16th note pickups and that's the one that's on the beat two three four one two three four one two three four and a one and two and three and four and so this is happening on four e and up that's the beat one two three four one two three four one two There are two really cool unison riffs in this song, so let's start with the first one because it's a little bit shorter and a little easier, and the second one actually starts the same. So uh, what it sounds like is this. Okay, it's all C minor pentatonics go. Okay, we're just using this middle part. Okay. So uh, let me just do it for you really, really slowly, uh, for those of you that can pick it up without me having to name each fret one by one. Um, it's uh, probably going to sound a little bit long to uh, go through all of these notes, especially for the second one. So here's the slow one. Okay, so let me talk you through this now. So we're starting with the third finger on the tenth fret of the fourth string. Then we're going to go down to the eighth fret, same string, back to the tenth fret, and then to the eighth fret on the third string. Now what's going to happen now, we're going to play up the scale. So we've gone here. Now we're going to go... Okay, which is going just straight up the minor pentatonic scale, starting with the third finger on the 10th uh, fret of the 4th string, up onto the 8th fret of the 2nd string, then back down the scale, 10th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret, we're not on the 4th string, and then we're going to finish with the 3rd finger on the 10th fret of the 4th string. Okay, 1, 2, and a 3, Four and a one and a two and a three, four and a one. Okay, so then we've got this little on the tenth fret of the, the fifth string, then eighth fret of the fourth string, tenth fret again on the uh, fourth string. Oh, this is a bit of a tongue twister. The second time through that, starting the same, it's almost the same, but instead of going right the way down there the second time, kind of repeats that middle section. Here, going up the scale, back down, back up, back down, and then we're finishing. such a cool little riff this. So it starts exactly the same as the first riff. OK, 
Okay, so just here, right at the end, where it starts to double. First time it's doing that, so it goes. Then that's the doubling up. This time, we've got a little slide going there from the 10th fret up to the 12th fret, okay? Okay, now we're going to go 10th fret, 12th fret on the 3rd string, up to the 11th fret of the 2nd string, 12th fret on the 3rd string, 11th fret to 13th fret on the 2nd string, So now we're going from the 2nd string, 11th fret, 13th fret, 11th fret on the thinner string, back to the 2nd string, 13, 11, uh, 12th fret of the 3rd string, back to the 2nd string, uh, 11th fret, 13th fret, and then up to the uh, 11th fret of the thinner string. Wow. So. Okay, now we've got this really cool descending run. Okay, you've got to practice this one slowly because it's a little bit awkward. It's got a few weird moments in it. Now, if you can hear, this is groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. okay, I'd recommend that you get used to that first part, right, just nice and slow again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and you've got a little shift there with the first finger to negotiate as well. Now you're going to stretch up with your little finger to play that again. So 12th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret. You could play that note there as well, but I'm again listening to the record. It really sounds like he's stayed on that string for the, for some reason. Uh, I mean, it might be tonal. It does feel easier as well, actually, to tell the truth, for me to do that than at that point. Continuing this threes idea. Okay, but then it turns into a scale, so threes, 12th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret, then 10th fret, 8th fret, then the root note, which is the 10th fret of the 4th string. Then we're going straight down the scale, starting with the 1st finger, 8th fret of the 3rd string. Straight down the C minor pentatonic. Okay, this whole run again, nice and slow. I still remember learning this as a teenager and jamming it along with my band for the first time. And whether you're playing it with a real band or playing it along with a record, you really get a great feeling with this tune. You know, it's, it's so funky and fun to play and it's got interesting parts. And then if you can lock it in for that solo as well and play it along, it really feels, feels cool. It's a nice part. It's just that little bit tricky, but not too tricky that it's not achievable. You know, most of you guys will probably be able to play this with a little bit of practice, but it is going to take a bit of practice. And particularly with those faster riffs, the, 
the, the pentatonic kind of unison riffs. A really good thing that you can be doing is playing along with the original recording but slowing it down a little bit using one of those programs like Transcribe to maybe if you can't play it at 100% speed, maybe moving it to 70% or 80% and practicing playing it along like that. It's a really good way of doing it rather than either trying to do it with a metronome or trying to do it on your own. Of course you need to learn it first, right, and be able to get it right, but then playing along with the record at a slightly slow down speed is a really, really good idea and something I'd encourage that you get into for most tunes, uh, particularly this kind of one as well. And uh, in case you missed it earlier, really important thing as well is just to practice playing along, you know, with the volume down, trying to really lock into that groove, getting those chips to be really kind of locked in is, is the big deal with it. It's not just about playing it right, it's about really getting the groove really solid and playing with the whole band, you know, and playing along with the original recording of Stevie Wonder's band is, is you're not going to get a better training than that if you can really try and lock into that pocket properly and, and make it feel good. You know, making it feel good is, is part of the key there. So I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with this tune and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye.